In this video, we're going to be discussing the prone torsion test, which is an alternative to the specific torsion test used in the assessment of rotational lumbar instability. To perform the prone torsion test, the patient will be positioned in prone. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be demonstrating this on vertebra L4 and L5. But understand that you should also perform this at the other intervertebral segments, L3 and L4, L2 and L3, and so on and so forth. So my caudal hand, which is represented in red, is going to be on the L5 spinous process. And we're going to be stabilizing L5, holding it firmly, and preventing it from moving. We want L5 to be static. My cranial hand is represented in green, and that's going to be on the L4 spinous process. And with my thumb there, I'm going to be actually applying a rotational force and attempting to actually move or rotate that spinous process in one direction or the other relative to the caudal vertebrae. So these forces are going to be applied in opposite directions. That will look something like this. So right there, my left hand, that is my caudal hand. And with my thumb, I'm going to be stabilizing the L5 spinous process, as you see right there. Notice that thumb is approaching the spinous process from the left, and I'm going to be exerting a force pushing to the right. Not enough to actually move it to the right, but just to hold it in position. Then my right hand, that is my cranial hand. I'm using my thumb there on the L4 spinous process. And I'm actually going to be attempting to move the L4 spinous process to the left. Move it to the left relative to the L5 vertebrae. So it'll look something like this when I actually apply the force. Trying to move that L4 spinous process to the left. I can then move up one segment. Okay? So there I'm using my left hand, my caudal hand, to stabilize L4. And now I'm using my right hand to try to push the L3 vertebra its spinous process to the left. And you basically just work your way up the lumbar spine. Okay? Then I can stabilize L3, and then try to move L2 relative to L3, and so on and so forth. Now in these examples right here, I'm attempting to move the cranial spinous process toward the patient's left. But remember, that actually means I'm testing right rotation. How do I know that? Well, here is a diagram of a lumbar vertebra. So up here is the body. That would be anterior. Back here is the spinous process. That would be posterior, which makes this left over here and this right. Now, if I take my thumb and I move the spinous process towards the patient's right, notice now that the anterior part of the vertebra, the body, is now pointed or oriented towards the left. In other words, moving the spinous process to the right actually induces left rotation. In other words, the movement of the spinous process is going to be opposite or contralateral to the direction of rotation. Okay. So then let's move this back to neutral. And then we're going to use our thumb to move the spinous process left. This is what I was doing in the video. When I move the spinous process left, Notice now the vertebra is facing right. So left movement of the spinous process is associated with right rotation. So the bottom line here is whatever direction you're moving the spinous process, you're actually assessing contralateral or opposite rotation. Now, in the previous video, we covered the specific torsion test. And recall, at the start of that maneuver, we rotated the patient's body. And when we rotated the body, it took up all the available intersegmental lumbar rotation, which is about 2 to 3 degrees. That being said, if we've already taken up that motion and the person doesn't have instability, well, then if we try to move the spinous process, there shouldn't be any additional rotation. So that spinous process should not move. That's a normal test. In the prone torsion test, we haven't rotated the patient's body. They're just in prone. So when we attempt to move that spinous process, it should move, but not much. So not only should each intervertebral segment have about the same amount of rotation, but each segment should have the same amount of rotation side to side. Bottom line, what that means is uh, the L4, L5 segment should have the same amount of right rotation as the L3, L4 segment. But also, at the L4, L5 segment, you should have about the same amount of right rotation as you do left rotation. 
That being said, a positive test here is going to be excessive rotation of the cranial vertebra compared relative to the other vertebral levels and or the contralateral side. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.